Is yours able to show in a slideshow or no? Um, can you see my screen? Uh, yeah, it just shows like small slides. It's not full screen? No. Okay, it's full screen on mine. Perfect. Okay. Great, thank you. So I want to welcome everyone tonight. I'm glad that um, you can take the time to join us uh, to have some updates uh, in terms of what's happening. Uh, we've been trying to get information out there as soon as we know things and we have updated information to share. Uh, so this evening, uh, on February 18th, 2021, we have some newly communicated decisions that went out just over the last few days. And we wanted to have an opportunity to answer any questions that you might have and just review some of the information. Um, so we have some important dates um, that we wanted to list here and we'll be sharing the PowerPoint so it'll be up on the uh, Facebook page so that you can see it later. But on in February, we had report card uh, interviews that took place February 10th and then yesterday, February 17th. In March, uh, we have our March break, which now is moved, which is one of the messages that we communicated. It's moved to March 1st to the 5th. March 1st, for child care, we're going to reopen for essential workers. And March 29th, we're going to begin our registration for Head Start, K-4, and for new students in K-5 to grade 8. In April, um, on April 2nd and April 5th, our Easter holidays, April 6th, teachers are going on site to start preparing for a return to the hybrid model. April 9th will be the last day that students who are in hybrid will be full remote. That will be their last day. And then the plan date is April 12th for a return to the hybrid model. So AMBI continues to prioritize health and safety of students and staff and community. So in making any of the decisions that we've been making and all of the protocols that we've put in place, we consult with the health department in Mohawk Council, with the Eastern Ontario Health Board. We continue to look at what's happening in other school districts around us, have discussions with our partners in Upper Canada in order to make informed decisions uh, so that we're in advance making those decisions rather than reacting to situations. So when we're looking at making our updates and trying to decide uh, how we're going to continue with our learning model for this year, we base our decisions on important health data. So currently we've been looking at the rising number of positive cases in the community and surrounding areas. Um, currently we're at 31 cases within the community. Uh, numbers are starting to drop in the surrounding areas, but they're still quite high. The number of staff and parent reports of potential exposure and or positive cases. So on a daily basis, we receive anywhere from one to five calls for contact tracing. So if our schools were open, this would impact several classes of teachers and students. And this would push us into a forced closure. Um, and we would then be in a reactive mode rather than in a proactive mode. There are a lot of new variants that are out that spread easily and quickly. So taking all of that into consideration, um, we, had a, we had an example of a situation uh, a week and a half ago where we had students starting to come in to do some of uh, their assessments. And so we were bringing in a student one at a time. Uh, we brought in uh, a student and the next day we received a phone call to tell us that the student was exposed to a positive case. So now that meant the teacher that worked with that child to set them up for that was now a pot in potential uh, risk and needed to be isolated until they found out if that child was positive and then would have to go get tested themselves and stay isolated. So if we were in session, we would be losing staff members and we do not have supply teachers at this time. 
all of the supply teachers that have been on our list prior are working for us. We brought everybody on in order to keep numbers both online and in the classroom small. So if we, we had teachers out, we'd have to call in the morning or announce and say, sorry, there's no grade six class today or no grade five class. Um, and that would happen just, you know, sort of in the moment. So we're trying to avoid that situation by continuing to be online only at this point. We have a parent, um, we have a parent support group, um, which began uh, taking place. We have some really good feedback that came from that session and we're inviting parents to continue to join. Uh, the parent su support group information is posted on the website. It's important that we all do our part in social distancing and following the recommendations in order to lower the numbers and to be able to return on site. We had a really good start in September and we felt confident that we would be able with all the safety protocols to continue. And then when we got close to Halloween, um, you know, people started to get tired of the social distancing, of not seeing family and friends, and people started doing more outings and getting together and having Halloween gatherings and parties and, it made a big jump in cases, which caused us to have to shut down. And at this point, we still haven't gone into the phase where we've been able to reopen safely. Um, we recognize that it's not easy. We know that parents are trying to do their own work or go to work and have somebody monitor your children online. It, it is very difficult. We, we thank you for all of your efforts that you're putting in. Um, if there's any other supports that you need to utilize, please reach out to us to let us know what's happening and, and how we can help to support. Uh, packages are still being delivered to homes, homework's being picked up um, when things need to be brought back to the school. We are really eager to get everything back to normal and, and to start seeing the children at the schools. Uh, it's definitely not the same uh, with having that remote, talking to them over computers. And we know it's not the same for them and we know it's going to be a hard adjustment when they do come back. So we invite parents to join the parent support groups, to reach out to the school counselors, to the school principals. Um, we're here to try to support as much as we can through these difficult times. Uh, our food service, uh, we're continuing right now a partnership with the Boys and Girls Club and we're delivering 150 meals daily. Um, it's important to note that the Boys and Girls Club is not part of AMBI. We're partnering with them and we're grateful that they've uh, given us uh, access to 150 meals. They have a number of other schools that they service as well, plus their programming. Uh, at this point, we can't increase those numbers. Uh, however, there are other options too with, um, through the Department of Social. So if you reach out, uh, we can give you some contact information. We also started a new food and language initiative, and we're gonna continue doing that weekly until the end of March. And we may continue further than that, but we'll reassess as to what's happening with school first. Um, this initiative is intended to encourage language use that's directly related to the foods that are being delivered. Um, so the hope is that we'll add things to our website as well so that you can uh, follow along us and use more language in the home to promote language in the community. The contact information, just a reminder that um, we had found out with some of the deliveries that parents had moved or that there was a change in, in address or phone number. Please make sure that you update that information because if we send out uh, any information through school messenger or any deliveries, if we have the correct information, you'll be able to receive it in a timely manner. So once again, we just wanna thank all of our parents uh, who are working with our teachers to ensure that the children are attending their online sessions and completing their assigned work. Um, attendance is recorded for the online sessions. These lessons are required to support success and collect grades for students. 
if the students are not attending their online classes, they're missing lessons that are being delivered to support curriculum requirements. We encourage as much as possible to try to attend the online classes. If there's uh, something happening with internet access, we need you to reach out and try to let us know. At times we've had, uh, just this past week, we had power outage and we had some classes that were delayed because teachers had no power, students had no power. So it, it happens. Um, we know that um, we have to put supports in place uh, come the starting of the new school year in order to help some students who've really had challenges trying to get online. We're hoping that we can have a really positive summer and be able to offer some on-site programming uh, this summer to help some students uh, with both social skills and academic. Thank you again. Um, are there any questions at this point? If you wanted to put a question in the chat too, you could do that as well. So we can all be reached by email um, and the board office. Uh, there's someone at reception every day from eight to four. Uh, the school receptions, uh, there's someone at the school as well. Um, some staff are on site on certain days to prepare packages. Um, the uh, AMBI board office staff rotate, and so we're on site on different days uh, to respond to any needs. But we're, we're available through email, um, any messages that you send through the Facebook message, JC, make sure that we receive it to be able to respond. Does any of the team have anything to add? Oh. So we have a couple questions. Um, will Ambi reconsider the date of return for an earlier date if the trend of COVID numbers drop, dr dropping dramatically continues? It's possible um the thing is that we need to be shut down at least two weeks after the march break um so our march break is march 1st to the 5th and we need to make sure that at least two weeks following that that we're shut down just in case anyone did travel uh in order to see where that trend of numbers um goes at that point so we would not be able to look at anything before the last week of march at the earliest the original school opening plan said students would be in class no more than three to four hours per day, but this is not the case for some students. How can this be fixed? So it depends on the, on the grade as well of the student. So some students, like I know the, some of the earlier students are only on for an hour or two each day. Um, depending on the grade that the student's in and the expectations, the work expectations, there may be more time that's required for them to be online for supports. Um, not sure if it's consistent amount of time or if there's breaks in between because there might be different classes and then joining up with different groups. I know that their reading group um, is anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes just for their reading work. So it would, I, it would be best to discuss that with the principal directly because they would know uh, which classes and what the requirements are. And, and unfortunately, I think we were all kind of hoping to, this would be short term and we would have been back in school at this point. So we wouldn't still be online.
Anyone who just joined, we're just taking questions. You can ask your question out loud or you can type it in the chat. We have another question. My niece is on from 8 to 11.30, then 12 to 2.45. She does not receive supports. She's in with her teacher with the exception of gym two times weekly, which is during their lunch break. She's overwhelmed. This is not a question, more of a comment. Yeah, so definitely there should be a reach out to the school, to the principal, to the teacher, to set up a conference, to have a discussion. Um, on how that can be, how she can be supported uh, and what the needs are. Hi, everybody. That overwhelmed feeling is happening in a lot of cases um, with students and, and um, parents and also teachers and staff. So to kind of like respond back to that comment is if that's your niece, I would encourage your sister to whatever schools that is in also to be supported herself because one of the things that happens is if the parent is not good in the home, then the children are not either. So one of the things that we've identified in the parent support group that we have is a little bit of hacks that work for different families. It doesn't have to be families who are just struggling. Families who are doing really well can join because we wanna know like, what are you doing right? Or how did this, how is it just working for you? So encouraging your sister or brother, however, that your niece, um, her parents for support would be very beneficial. Um, and I would encourage anybody, any parents on this call or listening to this call to also um, utilize those supports, not only with teachers, but school counselors um, and throughout the whole school, you know, like the staff throughout the school. Yeah. 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 We have a comment or a question just to clarify. It sounds like to me that returning to school is being pushed back to accommodate people who are traveling for March break. Uh, no, um, the reason why we're pushing it back is because we can't forbid anybody from parents, families, staff, anybody from going anywhere, whether it just be to Ottawa. Um, and there are va new variants of cases everywhere, and we cannot, uh, we cannot screen and, and have people sign an affidavit saying they did not travel in order to let them in school. So we need to make sure that we're keeping everybody safe. And so in order to do that, we need to take the precautions because we can't monitor each household and we don't know where everybody goes. Um, and if they're off on the break, we, there's no way to track what they did or who they met with or who visited them. And so until we could see numbers going down, which is going to take some time because there's over 30 right now. And so until those numbers start dropping and there's no new cases uh, adding to those daily, then we need to continue in this remote environment. Because although at this point they haven't seen severe cases with kids, we don't want to be the first school district that has a severe case with a child. And we don't also want to be calling parents on a regular basis saying, you might have to isolate. And I know you live with your grandmother, but you know, there was an exposure in your child's class and we can't often tell you all the information as well. And by the time we get the information as to an exposure, it's already been three to four days that have passed. 
So in those three to four days, you could have been to the grandmother's house, to another grandmother's house, visiting an aunt. Uh, like there could have been a lot of people that you've come into contact with. And now we're telling you, well, three days ago, uh, there was a potential exposure to a positive case. You know, so we had a few of those right before the shutdown. And, you know, it was challenging because people wanted to know who and where and, and and there was a lot of things we just can't say because it's confidential. And a, another decision, another part to that decision is also giving people and um, a lot of the staff, we do have quite an older population of staff members and they're trying to get the vac vaccine. So it's giving them the opportunity to get that vaccine and um, Get their first shot in and try to build some immunity before we start bringing the, the students back in. We have another parent that just joined so just um, we're just taking questions now you can ask them out loud or type them in the chat. I'd just kind of like to go back to the um, the question about um, the length of the school day. When we first closed back in March, I don't think we had access to enough technology for everybody. So we did have very minimal time online. It took us a while to be able to get all the technology to um, distribute it to students. So starting in the fall, we still didn't have enough uh, Chromebooks for all of our students. So as we progress later on, we were able to get more technology, provide more platforms for learning, get more training for our teachers, get the kids used to it. So as that happened, I think um, we also expected the students to increase their amount of times because they were going to get, you know, more lessons presented to them. I just have a comment, um, not necessarily a question, but a comment about the length of time that our kids are online during the day. I understand everybody's new to this and um, we don't really have a guideline on how to do it, but I think something that should be really looked into based on how long we're doing this is um, the benefit of a shorter day for kids online because for homeschooling, um, my friends have their kids in school for three to four hours a day regularly um, and I understand that this is the public school system but we have been doing this for like a year now so we need to look at I think changing because I it's not healthy ment mentally physically psychologically for our kids to be sitting in front of a computer trying to learn this way for six hours a day I understand like everybody's doing the best they can but that doesn't mean that we can't further our learning and adjust two shorter days. So it's it, that's definitely something that we can discuss, uh, but I think that it has to be looked at by age of the child, um, you know, what program they're in currently. Um, some, because uh, on, on the flip side of it, some parents were calling and saying they're not getting enough and how do we expect them to continue like this if they're only getting two to three hours um, and they're not getting all of their academics. Um, so there's, you know, there's sort of a range of what the expectations are in terms of what people are looking for. Um, but if there's any children that are feeling overwhelmed and not just overwhelmed because of the academics, I think right now, everybody's just tired of being online. I think that originally when it started like back in like April, when we got people connected online, we were all really excited even to see each other online and to have our meetings and have conversations and, you know, where we can, talk to other people because everybody was like shut down in their homes isolated and I think that um, you know April had mentioned earlier when she came on there's like 
this fatigue now that's going on where people are just tired of being online. There's like the stress of wearing masks and wash your hands and staying away from everybody. And it's really stressful and it's really trying on everybody. And um, if there is anxiety that's happening, if there is a stress that's, uh, you know, sort of overwhelming on any of the children or the families, we need you to be reach out. Like the school counselors are trying to reach out to gather that information. The principals meet with their staff online so that they can have those discussions, talk about, you know, is it too much? Do we need more breaks? Do we, how do, how do we best address this and, and handle the situations uh, to ensure that we're meeting all the needs and that, you know, we're addressing the concerns that all parents are bringing forward. But, you know, there's, there's a range. So, you know, we could have four parents that say we want more time and we want the teachers working with our kids more. And then some will say, well, you know what, I'd rather just online for, you know, an hour to give them a few lessons and then they're left to go for the day. Um, it's, it's hard. It's hard to try to find that balance that works for everybody. Um, but we, we need you to get in touch with your, your teacher at your school your principal, your counselor of your school, because then we can address those situations as either grade levels or, you know, groupings and look at how we could um, better support or if it's lessening some of the academic time, if it's sticking to just mornings or just afternoons. Um, teachers are like, even on Wednesdays, they're in full day training. So we, we have them back to back every day on training or meetings. Um, so, you know, if they had less time teaching online, it probably would mean more time training. So it's, you know, it's just, uh, trying to balance all that out. And, you know, we're, we're always willing to look at that. Uh, we just want to make sure that we're, you know, we have an obligation as well to provide for the academics and, you know, no one thought we would be out like a year now. Um, you know, we never figured this would go on this long and, we still don't have a good end in sight because as we mentioned earlier, we have a lot of aging staff and, you know, without a vaccine, it's really difficult. It puts them at a high risk. And um, in some of, in most of the schools now, they're, they're requiring you to double mask and kids right from grade one are, are being required to mask and not with uh, cloth masks anymore. They're having to be distributed and given the other masks to wear. Um, so it, it's, it's really hard and it'd be hard for a staff member, you know, that's older to have a double mask on trying to teach all day. So uh, that's, you know, part of the other part for staying online for now. So trying to balance out all the health and safety concerns of everyone and trying to do the best that we can uh, to ensure the social and academic pieces. But we'll definitely take a look at the schedules. We've been looking at them before, uh, at the teaching time and the amount of time that students are online and trying to adjust those accordingly. But we do need that feedback. Like we need to hear specifically, um, you know, what grade level, what students, what teachers, uh, because they vary. Like as much as we try to set up with them, you'll, you know, do this many subjects, this much time, each one varies a little bit differently in their approaches. I think it's important too for parents to reach out to the teacher um, if a student is struggling because they are holding office hours where they can go over any content one-on-one -on -one or at a slower pace or just, you know, answer questions as well. So I understand teachers, uh, you, you have a curricula, curriculum you have to follow. Um, are, are teachers and students expected to be getting the regular curriculum this year? Is it a condensed, con are it shortened? Are they, the whole thing's not expected to be done, is it? No, it's all, mod it's all been modified. They're trying to prioritize key areas of the curriculum in, in both literacy and numeracy. Um, you know, they are introducing some science aspects, some social studies aspects. We've been partnering with different places to bring some more hands-on science to kids to try to do some experiments, to send things home, uh, try to put activities out there for physical education, for health. Um, so it's not everything that they would be getting in school. 
Um, it's definitely modified and trying to prioritize some key areas. We definitely know that it's not possible to deliver at an elementary level the full curriculum. Although there are school boards that are delivering their full curriculum online and doing exams and everything. You know, so we're, we are definitely looking at all each grade level modifying and we're working, teachers are working really closely with uh, an assessment um, trainer and we're looking at other ways to assess the students' information and knowledge um, because we know it's not ideal circumstances. Sorry, I don't, um, I hope this doesn't come across as uh, aggressive in any way, but I'm really new to MB, so I'm just trying to understand everything. Um, so do we fall under like provincial guidelines for schooling or is MB self-governed on what is delivered and what is um, required academically for, um, to be met, I guess, in each level? Yes, while we try to take into consideration the provincial um, norms and, and guidelines, uh, we, we also, um, our curriculum is based on that, but we have decision-making power over the curriculum. Okay, thank you. Um, so I think that being said, I personally, just my opinion on it would, um, I would really like if, like you said, you're already doing, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, you guys are really evaluating on what's most important to teach. I just think that it, it may need to be called a little more if we're extending our online learning for this long. Cause um, like 99% of the parents that I've spoken to, which is quite a bit, are struggling getting their kids online because the kids are just, so tired of sitting in front of a computer it's not even that my kids or the kids of my friends don't enjoy the academic part because most of them do enjoy the academic part they're struggling being in front of a screen all day i i don't i don't really know what to do anymore and most of the people i know don't really know what to do anymore yeah, it's good information. Thank you. Um, and it's something that we'll definitely take back and have discussions on because I, I can tell you like we it's it, I think even in adults, it's the same feeling is that the online is, is getting to be a lot staring at a screen all day and, you know, working in that manner. And there's a real, um, you know, uh, fatigue that happens with that. Um, and it's it's not the novelty has worn off now. So, um, and that was part of the reason too for the break on the Wednesdays to try to divide up the week. So it was, you know, um, they would have sort of that midweek kind of breathing point. Um, you know, teachers would get training and it would be a little different environment for them. And when we were on site getting the school, you know, clean between the two cohorts, but um the idea is that you know we're hoping the down day on the wednesdays could be days where they you know don't have to be on screen and i think we need to remember too that other school districts are going through the same thing you know we have families not only in amy but in neighboring school districts are having the same struggles and the same issues and we also need to highlight that some of our students are actually thriving in this type of environment you know, and they're doing very well, especially with kids who, you know, don't really like to work, you know, in groups. Some of them are doing much better independently and doing very well with the technology. So we, we often try to highlight that too on our website of, you know, when, th when things are going very well, because we do have a lot of things that are going very well. That's fabulous. And I'm so glad to hear. And it's, it's something to consider to have this option all of the time, instead of just because we're in a pandemic, and we're trying to stay away from people. 
if you have this option all over time for children who do thrive in that environment. Um, well, we've had a few teachers too that have done really well with being able to teach both the in on-site students at the time and students that were remote um, and were able to join the two classes. And I thought that was a really good environment for any children that have to be off, like for an operation or if they had to be out for other health concerns, but they could still work, but they couldn't come to on site, that it would be a great option to have, you know, down the line now that we have so much more technology available to us. Absolutely. And that's great there. It's so awesome that good things are coming out of this. Mm -hmm. um, I just have one more question because I feel like I'm kind of taking over, but um, I have children who sign on pretty regularly and I have children who I cannot get out to sign on. Uh, more than once or twice a week. So my concern is what is going to happen with those children who I can't get to sign on. And for all of our mental health, we're not going to fight over it every single day of the week about signing on. And so my concern is next year, what is happening with those children? Are they going to be held back or in a sense punished because we're not, because I'm not going to force them to sit in front of a computer for six hours a day? Yeah. And I, can't answer you specifically for every child. What I can say is that we are going to be, we are meeting currently to look at how are we going to help and support both the mental health and academics of students when they finally return on site and we're finally back in some normal type environment. Um, we are not going to be penalizing kids because they couldn't get on or they couldn't work with the technology because it was a struggle for them. Um, we are going to be looking at what kind of supports we also don't want to overload them. Like we don't want it to become a 10 hour academic day, um, you know, where they're staying every day after doing more academics. Um, we want to try to provide supports in sort of an enriched kind of nurturing environment, uh, but really meet the needs of the individual children as best as we could. And I mean, for some children, it may mean that down the line, they may need an extra year academically to complete up to grade eight when they finish with Andy. For some, they may catch up in just a little bit of instructional time. Uh, for some students, other modifications or supports might need to be put in place. It's going to vary. Like, I, I really like to think that we could meet individual children individually, and we're not going to just group together to say, if you did not get on 20 times, you're repeating kind of thing and I know that like you know teachers and that and you know we were trying to pressure to say well you could repeat if you don't get on you know trying to like sort of motivate them to say okay I have to log on you know I have to come to class because we don't want them to just give up completely either um, and that was part of the point for having some of the science activities to say hey you're gonna get a kit delivered to your house you're gonna get to engage with this scientist in an activity virtually um trying to like get them more excited about some of the learning because it can get you know and some of our teachers have different technology skills like i've seen a lot of classrooms that you know are really innovative interactive they have tons of things going on and you know others are just learning and navigating their way through so they're trying to develop their classrooms it was all new for them too and you know, and, and with some, they have children at home themselves that they're trying to have online at the same time. And um, so, no, there's not going to be a set, like, if you didn't log on, sorry, you know, you're repeating. Um, we're, we're going to assess, we're going to try to meet their needs to figure out where they're at in, in math, where they're at in reading, and trying to build up the skills from there. I think some of the things we've been thinking about too, like right before the pandemic started, we had a math boost up camp for our grade three and six students, which, you know, was held on a Saturday. And surprisingly, we had a lot of students attend that. So we're looking to hopefully do more things like that when we return. We're also looking at hiring additional staff people who will focus mainly on identifying gaps and trying to bridge those gaps so that the students will get caught up. Uh, we have additional, you know, online platforms. We have online tutoring for reading. We have a math program. So we're hoping that, you know, once everybody is back face to face, those gaps will start closing quite quickly. Yeah, and we've been talking with the Boys and Girls Club and we're hoping if things go well for the summer, um, we're going to partner with them on a camp 
And so there'll be the social aspects, but they'll also do some reading and math pieces in, within that camp um, with their team. And so we're, we're looking at partnering with them to do something. And so our fingers are crossed that these numbers are going to start dropping and that we're going to be able to do something uh, this summer with the kids. And I, I would just add, like, as a, I'm the principal at the nautical school, but I think putting having that communication between your principal, your counselor and your children's teacher is that much more important. You know, like I've had, I have students at my school that can't log on for whatever reason. And had, I've had a lot of contact with the parents, um, the school counselor is calling. So now the teachers know, you know, like if they're not logging in, this is the reason why. If they're struggling, we're trying to get supports put in place for them. Um, but if we don't know, we can't help you. So, you know, reach out to Tracy if you're at AMS, um, Tracy and Sandy. If you're at Ganadago School, you can reach out to me or April. And if you're at Sny School, you can reach out to Tammy or um, Sandy Cook. But I mean, it's really important to make sure that you're making, making contact to let us know so that we can help in any way. You know, that's what we're here for. Yeah, because we did have some like families towards the end of last year that had said, you know, they were just tired now of everything and they were, it was nice out and they weren't logging on anymore. And, you know, we understood that it's like, it's stressful and, you know, it's not easy when you have a number of children on different classes on computers all day in different rooms and, you know, and you're trying to navigate all of that. We get it. It's not, it's not easy at all. Um, you know, and even coming back to school, we're anticipating that, you know, it's going to be hard for kids to settle back in, the, to get up every day and get on that bus and come back to school because they've been so used to being home now. And that in itself is going to be a new challenge in trying to, you know, sort of ease them back into that. And that's why I'm hoping we could get back into that hybrid model. So at least we can start that easing them back into the two days and and once the weather starts getting really nice too, we know there will be that stressor as well and them not wanting to come. I'd just like to thank the board and, and the staff for recognizing that putting the March break into April like they did in Ontario wasn't a good idea for us and that you've moved it, you moved it ahead to the beginning of March because like you know, so many have said tonight, we're tired. Um, you know, our kids are tired. I mean, my son is playing on with his friends online right now. You can hear him in the background, but you know, to get him up every morning and to get him to that desk is, it's a struggle now. And it's, you know, every night it's, I don't want to go to school. I'm like, you don't go to school, you know, but it's just that dread of wanting, not wanting to get online now. So, you know, thanks for thinking of your staff and, and the students and us parents for, um, you know, moving that March break up. I think we can all really use it. Thank you. And that's what we felt was that, you know, moving it forward any further, it, it's too far. Like people are tired right now. For some reason, it just hit a wall knowing that, you know, we're still shut down and there's all these cases and, you know, people need a break. And so, you know, this way it gives us the balance of having March break now. And then you have the long Easter weekend, you know, and, do things with your immediate family and relax and have some fun and, you know, in, in a safe way. So, but thank you for all the, like the feedback and the, you know, the questions tonight, because it'll really help us like in, in order to plan and look at what's happening, you know, after that break and how we're moving forward. And, but, you know, as Courtney and the others have mentioned, please reach out and and call your school uh the teacher the counselor um you know the more that uh we know and can help and support and you know have that understanding of what's happening the better that we can collaborate and work together so and that's why we try to have like these meetings uh so we can hear some information that maybe we're not getting on a regular basis So she just brought up a, a great point about the um, 
April break and the March break uh, that I hadn't thought of before. Uh, a lot of our families have students in both American and Canadian schools, and the American schools have their breaks in April. Um, so how would, what's, what's the plan for that? <laughs> It's always been like that. I mean, even before this, our break still would have been in March. Um, it's, it's always been the same. The only thing is it's always co con coincided with Upper Canada with Ontario's break. And for whatever reason, Ontario considered canceling completely the break. And then they moved it to April. And I, I understand that. I just, I mean, like, uh, my, I have two kids here who have their break in April. And I know a lot of families will probably take their children and go away during that April break also, well, even though they I have kids in the March don't break. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> we're kind of hoping they stay put and don't travel to any of those states that are unmasking. And <laughs> yeah, so. that, that happens every year and the kids just get marked absent. That's, that's all we can do. It happens all the and time. Then, and now they'll have to consider um, absences or whatever due to isolating, right? So if somebody does travel, well, if we're virtual, they can still attend. They don't have to isolate unless, you know, they could still continue remote learning instead of coming back to the hybrid. Yeah, because yeah, part of if they did travel in April and we are open, wouldn't be able to come on site for the 14 days after returning. But we've had families in the past that have taken, you know, children out in April to travel. Some have taken work with them. Some try to catch up when they get back. Okay, so just wanted to thank everybody again and keep encouraging you to read. Uh, let us know what's working, what's not working, how we can help. Um, and we'll take all of the feedback into consideration and look at how we could, you know, work towards supporting. Uh, if we have to go longer term online, what that's going to look like and, you know, how we can adjust to uh, make sure that, you know, students are not getting overwhelmed and, um, and the support for the families too with the counseling group, it's really important. I know sometimes there's like some sort of stigma on it, but it's really not. Um, we can all use, uh, you know, others to talk to and to reach out to, especially now with everything, you know, and, and a lot of parents are having the same struggles. So, um, you know, whether they're in person or online, a lot of the kids are just not wanting to participate anymore. So... Okay, so we're going to say good night. Thank you very much for attending. Um, Bye, Shannon, you're going to post the PowerPoint, right? Yep. Okay, thank you. Anna.